Hare Krishna. So Krishna is describing his opulences. Let's see two shlokas now and various opulences described in these two shlokas. Shloka number 22 and 23. Vedanam Sama Vedosmi Devanam Asmi Vasavaha Indriyanam Manaschasmi Bhutanam Asmi Chetana 23 Rudranam Shankaraschasmi Vittesho Yaksha Rakshasam Vasunam Pavakas Chasmi Meruhu Shikarinam Aham. So here Krishna is saying in Shloka number 22 Vedanam Sama Vedo Asmi. So he's saying that in all the Vedas, in all the four Vedas, I am Sama Veda. The speciality of Sama Veda is it's very sweet and it's very poetic. So Krishna is saying that I am that which is prominent. And then he says, Devanam Asmi Vasavaha. So Vasavaha basically is Indra. So he's saying in all the Devi Devtas, all the 33 crore Devi Devtas, the king of Devi Devtas is Indra and I am that. And then he says, Indriyanam Manas Chasmi. So in, we, have, we have various senses in our body. So we have five knowledge acquiring senses eyes, nose, ears, tongue and skin and we have five working senses that is we have speech then hands and legs, genitals and rectum. So in this way there are ten senses which are there in the body but then we have the eleventh one and that is mind and the mind is the king of all these senses. It is that strongest sense which controls everything and as all of us know, mind is that which makes the person goes mad. So in this way, we understand that mind is the strongest sense that is there in the body. And we also understand if mind is controlled very properly, then now the person can be very, very blissful. Jitatmana prashantasya. The one who has conquered the mind, he can be prashanta, he can be blissful. And here Krishna is making it very clear. He is saying in all the senses, who am I? The greatest one and that is mind. So, mind is difficult to control because it's Krishna. <laughs> and also it is said, Bhutanam Asmi Chetanaha. In the living beings, I am the consciousness, he says. Now, what is the difference between a living entity and a dead entity? A, a dead entity is just matter. And a living entity is matter along with that, we have a living force in it. And that is soul or spirit. So it's very clear here, you know, when we are uh, trying to understand this, Krishna is saying that I am that consciousness which is the symptom of soul. So here it is said that this consciousness is supreme and eternal. Consciousness cannot be produced by combination of matter. So this consciousness that is there, it is eternal. It's not that the matter will develop and suddenly the consciousness will come, no. The soul enters and the symptom of the soul is consciousness. It enters the semen and then the semen is combined with the, with the ovum and that's how the living entity's body gets formed and it keeps growing. Why? Because the soul is there inside that uh, matter and the consciousness which is a symptom of the soul is there throughout the body and that's how the entire body keeps growing. As soon as the soul leaves the body, there is no consciousness. You pinch that body, nothing is going to happen. Why? Because there is no consciousness. But if a person who is living, go and pinch that person, will get a slap on the face. Why? Because he is able to feel, he is able to feel that pain. So in this way, when the consciousness is removed or when the soul leaves the body, the body remains dead. And only when the soul enters the body, the body is live or living. So here Krishna is saying, that force, which is the most important entity in the living being, that is consciousness, it's me. And he has made it very clear in 15th chapter that each and every living entity that is there, they are my part and parcel. Mamai vamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. All these parts and parts, all these living entities are my eternal parts and parcels, Krishna is saying. 
and now he is making a statement saying that I am the living force, I am the consciousness. So after that, in the next shloka, he is saying, Rudranam Shankaras Chasmi. That is, in all the Rudras, I am Lord Shiva. Now, for the ones who know and for the ones who don't know, this is a very good information that there are 12, there are 11 Rudras. Their names are like this Manyu, Manu, Mahinasa, Mahan, Shiva, Ritadvaja, Ugra Reta, Bhava, Kala, Vamadeva, and we have Dhritavrata. So these are the 11 Rudras which are there. And out of these 11 Rudras, the one whom everyone worships in this world, Shiva, he is one of them. So in this way we understand that here Krishna is saying in the group of Rudras, in the 11 personalities, the topmost personality is there, the prominent one who is there, who is worshipped by everyone, he is Shiva and actually he is me. So he is saying that Shiva is a representative of Lord Krishna. So whenever we see Lord Shiva, we have to remember Lord Krishna, that's what he is saying here. And then what, what is the job description of Lord Shiva? He is the Lord of mode of ignorance or Tamaguna. Why? Because his job description is annihilate, annihilation. When the time comes, when the pralaya has to happen, he is the one who does tandav and annihilates the entire universe. So, you know, destruction is in the mode of ignorance. And Lord Shiva does that, so he is the lord of mode of ignorance or tamaguna. And then he says, Vittesho yaksha rakshasam. So, vitta, ish, vitta isha. Vitta means wealth and Isha means controller or lord. So the lord of Vitta, the lord of wealth or the controller of wealth, who is that personality? Kuvera. So Kuvera is one of the Yakshas. So these Yakshas and uh, other personalities, they are all uh, beings with higher powers. So, you know, so when it comes to Kuvera, he is that personality, the treasurer of all the Devi Devtas. And then here it is given, Vasunam Pavakas Chasmi. So there are again eight Vasus. So they are like this Apa, Dhruva, Soma, Dharma, Anila, Pavaka, Pratyusha, and Prabhasa. So these are the eight Vasus. And out of that, Pavaka or fire is the prominent one. So here Krishna is saying that I am Pavaka, I am fire. So whenever we see fire, Anywhere, whom we remember, we see Krishna. And automatically when something is set on fire, automatically Krishna word will come <laughs> from the mouth. <laughs> and Meruhu shik Shikarinam Aham. So here it is said that among the mountains, I am Meru. So Meru Parvat is the highest mountain when it comes to the material creation. So here Krishna is saying that that prominent mountain, that famous mountain, it's me. So whenever we hear about Meru, we have to remember Krishna. So here Krishna is saying so wonderfully or he's telling us so wonderfully that all these prominent personalities, either you see or either you hear of them, remember they are my representatives, they are non-different from me, so remember me. So in this way Krishna has spoken about some opulences. Let's continue the discussion. It's very interesting where, he's, where Krishna is speaking about his opulences. Let's see a few more in the next few shlokas. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.